All right, well, here we go. So why order control? Common offenders, there's plenty of those. Uh, source treatment and, and uh, carrier treatment are really the topics we're going to take a look at here. So what happens, you, you know, you, back in 1930, you built this plant and your renderer, and all of a sudden, there's all these buildings around you when they didn't exist, you know, 50, 60 years ago. And now you're going, oh crap, now what am I going to do? So that's what happens, you know. And all of a sudden you have a real problem because people start building these nice buildings, nice homes, and the wind blows the right way, and you got the calls. Oh, we got plenty. We have problems. Your plant stinks. <laughs> so, you know, that's certainly one of the reasons. Um, but in terms of um, working inside a plant, nobody wants to work in a plant that stinks. Right? We all get that. Looking at, you know, the working conditions for the employees. Protecting the capital assets. You know, there's a lot of corrosion that goes on with particular things like hydrogen sulfide. Um, uh, improving community relations, which is probably the biggest one. I mean, to be honest with you. Yeah, people who are trying to sell their house and they drive, you know, the, the new uh, uh, buyer pulls up and takes one with them. Forget that idea. I'll move on. So there's many reasons, probably more reasons that are up here that we, people are worried about order control. So what is the definition? A property of a substance that has an effect on the nasal sense of smell. Be pleasant or offensive. I had to throw a little bit more to that. <laughs> My buddy. You need a tattoo. What's that? You need a tattoo. He, he does need a tattoo. Ruby, no, you do. No, you Ruby, do. Yeah. Oh, I need a tattoo. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'm all that far. <laughs> so you got to have a source and you got to have a sender. The carrier is typically here. And the receiver is usually a schnoz. Like you see over there, not quite as big as mine. And these are the offenders. H2S is the biggest one. Uh, we're captains, usually paper mills, organic stuff, you know, all this stuff. We've all smelled, you know, especially if you go to, to that rendering facility that Joe was talking about earlier. Um, you walk in there and you walk out and you are not happy when you're in your car because you are rancid. Is that the word we use for? For days. For days. It's like the Seinfeld episode where he can't get the smell out of his car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember a guy that used to come and help me fix. He was from a, a coated oxide uh, company. And he would come into the rendering plant and he would, he would help us fix the equipment. And then literally, what was his name? He would, get, he would get in his car, he would drive to the airport and get on a plane. And he stunk like all of those put together. I can't imagine sitting next to that guy. Oh, I wish you could remember his name. Anyway, I think he's still around, still does it. I think he still gets on a plane and doesn't change his clothes. <laughs> but anyway, there's a lot of stuff here, and all of them are nasty. So you, again, you got, you got your paper mills, you, know, you got your uh, renderer down there on the left, your, your digester. Usually those are pretty good unless there's some issues with the clarifier and the H2S can really, really be bad. Or anytime you have a sanitary sewer when you open it up. And again, H2S is usually, usually the biggest one. Uh, but for captains, for whatever reason, I'm not even sure why, those are the orders that you get in a, in a paper mill. You ever been to Kakana? You ever been to Kakana? That's, oh, yeah. that, that's what that is. That's called the Mercapta. And that's really hard to get rid of them. Big facility like that. Every time I drive up to the cabin, you know, it's like, how do people live in this area? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they just get used to it, I guess. I don't know. I can't stand it either. When you smell uh, something so often, you just don't even smell it anymore. Like oxygen probably stinks, we don't even know it because yeah. <laughs> we breathe it. Right. I always get mad at myself that I don't push the air conditioning button and recirculate uh, before yeah, you right. get to that yeah, area. Yeah. It's like, I got to, I got to, damn it, I missed the gas <laughs> trap. <laughs> uh, so then it's already in your car. You're like, yeah, you just got to keep up there. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the, you know, the putrid uh, garlic, the uh, thiophenols, and, you know, the, the one that's really, again, the one that's really bad is is the H2S. That's the rotten egg stuff. Well, that's the most prevalent. 
So I had a customer in Iowa that made gelatin and they had horrible H2S problems in their sewer lines. And they had a mile or more of concrete sewer line that they had to replace because H2S had done that much damage. So it, it actually forms uh, sulfur gas and it, you know, it goes up on, uh, on top of the uh, concrete pipe in the sewer line and it slowly ate it away. I remember walking next to the railroad tracks and there was all these holes, like a wood yard, like a nice long hole. And it was all the concrete that had fallen into this because of H2S. That must have cost them oh, millions and millions of dollars to replace that. So it is not, I mean, this is really a problem. I'm sure it can be. Candy. So there it is. <clears throat> Highly repulsive, that's for sure. Very low odor threshold and really, uh, really dangerous. Um, we, uh, uh, yeah, corrosive metal and concrete. So then I was at a, a, a tannery uh, and they had H2S detectors all over the place. And for whatever reason, the, the alarms never went off. But mm -hmm. you looked around this place and we were walking on this catwalk and there was these tanks down below and it was just all lost. And I was like, <laughs> Jeff was with me, Jeff right today. I'm like, Jeff, I don't think I even want to step on that. Because, you know, to any, any uh, you know, iron-based metal, I mean, it is toast. I mean, it was like, you know, it was like this thick, and I should have been that thick kind of thing. Dang. So, yeah, very soluble in water. The, the, we'll talk about that in a sec, but the, the, the warmer the, the water is, the more H2S you're going to get out of it. Um, but, you know, the, the TLVs on that are, I mean, if you go down in a sewer and there's H2S down there and it's above 20 ppm, uh, you may not make it back out. So it's serious business. What do you think, Rob? Okay. So here's here's the corrosion effects. Obviously uh, uh, significant. You know, readily dissolves in water. It's uh, hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide and uh, Hydrosulfide, hydroxides, all um, converted when it headed to water. This is just showing the pH. So when we talk about using sulfide as an example for uh, treatment of metals, one of the things that you never want to do is put sulfide in water at a pH of less than seven, because you get down to that six and fives, all that sulfide, the H2S is going to come out of the water. And I unfortunately had an experience where my customers did this because why? They didn't calibrate the pH. Yes, Bill, that is definitely a pooping emoji word. <laughs> Thank you for paying attention. <laughs> and I said, uh, what was his name? Gary. I said, Gary, have you checked your pH? <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, they, they, the whole plant was evacuated because of H2S. Oh wow. It was probably 250 people. So they were not happy with me, but it wasn't my fault. They just weren't taking care of their, their people. So that's why I'm a little you know, crazy about that stuff. This is just showing uh, uh, probably more than you need to know about H2S. And again, you know, just looking at the, the different temperatures and as the as the water gets warmer, you'll get more H2S, which you don't want. So that's why in the summertime, a lot of people have more problems than in the winter. Uh, yeah, uh, anaerobic digesters, that's another another area to, to find these things. And if, if H2S builds up too much in your biogas, your biogas isn't worth it. So you got to be really careful about it. So around nine pH is the best for H2S. Yeah, if if you are going to be if you're going to be safe, yeah, nine nine would be good. But anytime you strike anything below seven, that's when it starts to off gas and come out of solution. Really create problems. So one of the things that happens is you get these uh, sulfate reducers, and under low uh, conditions or low DO conditions. 
and it kind of gets you know in a in a, a lateral or a force vein where there's bacteria and slime. It goes anaerobic, and that's when they start start uh, creating H2S. This is a big problem in almost every municipal wastewater system. They have H2S problems. Well, a ton of them do. It just is what it is. So there's ways to treat it. And then, you know, force mains, gravity mains, you know, even some of these, uh, you know, lagoons out there, if they let them go, I mean, I, I'm driving by on Highway 57, there's a there's a cheese plant over there. That's not what they can't handle. They make the best uh, string cheese. Yes, that's it. And their they're lagoons are just horrible. They oh, just smell. Yeah, it's H2S. Mm. And we've talked to them. And, um, so there's that, you know. There's things other than H2S, and uh, yeah, garbage smell. That's that's a good one. So there's other other ways of uh, taking care of some of these things. But really, you know, we, we think about how to take care of this. This is where the common sense thing comes in. You know, um, mechanical options, uh, chemical source, chemical carrier, chemical carrier could be just about anything. So turbulence. You know, when we think about piping and the potential for gases to come off of a pipe, if your pipe is above the level of the water beneath it, it's going to splash and it's going to create potential, potentially create odors. You can get that pipe down under the water, a lot less, you know, volatilization and those kinds of things. Yeah, keep things mixed. Don't let them sit and that slime layer doesn't build up and there's not the potential for nasty odors to you know, ventilation, you know, always, anytime you can aerate or mix, uh, you're way better off. So that plant that was on in Iowa, uh, that lost a uh, mile of concrete pipe, eventually what we did is we started feeding ferric chloride and, I mean, fixed the problem, but by then it was too late. If they start with started feeding ferric, what happens is it forms iron sulfide. It's a really dark black. Um, it's about as dark black as you can get. So the sulfide and the iron come together, form iron sulfide. Um, yeah, one of the things that is is a little bit dangerous with that is ferric sulfate or ferric chloride is very very um, low in pH. So you got to make sure that that pH stays up. Because otherwise you have what? Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. It's like no, not the last sentence of yours, but I. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can, if there's anything there, it can come on a solution. I, I won't hold it against you. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's kind of like, I'm exhausted. Um, you know, this is another way to do it, and there's multiple ways of, of treating with these mechanical options. You know, you've heard of scrubbers. They're typically on top of buildings. Sometimes they're next to a, uh, a digester or um, a clarifier, even at a, you know, a, at a wastewater plant. A lot of facilities have these. You know, in Milwaukee, they have a very, Covent has a really big one. Um, Brittany, how, how much does that thing handle? The air scrubber, I don't know how much it, it handles. It is a massive air scrubber. I've seen the guys. You know, I'll work with it, but I don't work with it. And that thing is pretty great though. When they turn on, it smells nice. Yeah, good. pretty much, pretty much gone. And I think they're using what bleach in there, caustic. I'm not sure about caustic. Yeah, I think they well, use they use, bleach, yeah. yeah, they use bleach to oxidize. And that's something they put in there. And then that was that. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Treatment of the water. And uh, you know you can also use activated carbon. You know have a have a vessel that contains activated carbon. And these I see more and more of these biofilters. Um, they just run. They have this big like a big dumpster full of uh, wood chips and stuff and bacteria growing there. And they run the the uh, gas air through it. And on the other side, comes up doesn't smell. I mean it's pretty cool. Have you seen? Have you seen mm -hmm. these? Yeah, yeah. They actually work. And I don't know specifically if there's a specific order that it takes care of, 
but I know that they do work. <clears throat> so we have pH adjusters, we have precipitation with iron, we can oxidize these things with chemicals, you know, like, like bleach or other oxidizers, per, peroxide. We got scavengers, we got inhibitors, masking agents. That masking agents used to be popular like 25, 30 years ago. You'd walk into a place and it smelled like bubble gum uh, or cherries. And it really didn't help. It just kind of made it somewhat tolerable. And then these, uh, some of the newer products are really, really good. And we'll talk about those in a second, I guess. So any other pH adjusters, you know, main hydroxide, caustic lime, really help keep, help keep that pH up, keep those, those sulfides in the water. Um, uh, yeah, in some cases, those higher pHs can create some other issues, some other unique odor issues. And I've actually seen that happen. Hard to describe, kind of a sweet smell. Not as bad as H2O. Nasty. So the oxidants, um, we can use, you know, just oxygen. Uh, ozone, peroxide, all those things we're familiar with. Permanganate one, that's used pretty often. And uh, the, the, the thing with those is they do oxidize everything. They don't just oxidize the H, H2S. So in some cases, there's maybe a better option out of there than another one. Peroxide is actually pretty good at not oxidizing everything, where sodium hypochlorite, there'll be a higher usage because it just oxidizes everything, not just the, H, uh, the H2S. Does that make sense? Here's the hydrogen peroxide example. That's essentially how it works. And this is permanganate. All these guys, all they're doing is oxidizing into all the elemental compounds, hydrogen and sulfur. So um, when we talk about these, these force mains and uh, municipalities, so one of the things that you can do is add a product uh, called calcium or sodium nitrate. So what happens is the, the bacteria will use the oxygen from the nitrate before it uses the oxygen from the sulfate. And this is a product, I don't know if you have any, any of you familiar, uh, familiar with a product called bioxide. Bioxide was very prevalent. I forget who it was made by. But anyway, they had, a, they, had a, um, they had marketed this product, and all it was was calcium uh, nitrate. And it wiped out so much H2S, it was like the greatest thing since sliced bread. There was a patent on it, that patent ran out, I don't know, five or six years ago. So now anybody can sell it. So what it's doing is it's taking the, just using oxygen. Remember, oxygen helps to keep things from going septic. So this is just uh, you know, a little schematic of what we see. And you know, all de all depends. You know, where is that where is that gas going to come out? Uh, the pumping station. Usually, it's at a manhole. You know, that's right next to a restaurant or a golf course, right? That's orders are coming out right there, so we can stop. You know, this is a little bit different uh, type of bio augmentation, but you can add these sulfide oxidizing bacteria, and. Uh, also, in a lot of these transfer stations or grease traps, they'll have a ton of grease in there and creates a situation, again, where things can go anaerobic and you have order issues. There's a, there's a ton of those out there. Uh, let's see here. You know, source order control. Um, you know, I, again, pH adjustment it is really critical. If you, if you don't do it, you're going to have issues. All right. Controlling orders that escape the source. Other sulfides, amines, ammonia, um, for some of you people, but ammonia is one of my least favorite. Uh, organic acids, volatile organics. Some of it can be uh, just overwhelmingly bad. So masking agents, again, talked about that a little bit. Um, these are compounds that don't really do anything to the odor compound or the odor complex. More of a, 
you know, a flowery scent or, a, as I said, a, a bubble gum or a cherry. I forget some of the other ones. Perhaps uh, mint, but not really changing the order molecule stuff, just kind of masking them. Didn't really like that. You could almost still smell the odors behind it. Now, this stuff is a little different. These essential oils are kind of a newer thing. Uh, probably 20 years, maybe 15, 20 years. So these things are actually um, combining with the odor. I think there's a little picture here. Um, better picture here. So kind of combining with the odors so that the odors, the odor molecules themselves are so big that the receptors in your nose can't smell them. These are these are things that are uh, the compounds are coming from, you know, plant extracts and it's kind of neat. What's that soap? Um, Every spring, every spring has those those uh, oils in, and that's how it works on our bodies. It, I mean, that's an old chemical, and I'll, I'm telling you, a lot of these new products smell a lot like every spring. We're really concentrated as every spring, and it really works. Okay, so odor neutralizer applications, and this is probably where Rob is excited. Um, but a lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity, you know, to, to treat, and there's really, you know, basically three different ways of doing it. Um, try to try to surround it, try to keep it contained. Um, if there's a, if there's a order that you can run through a sack and uh, take out, take care of it that way. There's a, a vent, ventilation. You can add it to the, uh, the ventilation system. And every every system or every type of, of uh, control system kind of has, has a different method. You know, all these are, are spray bars with different configurations. Really depends on the, the plant you're working with, how you can apply some of these things. But they do work. I mean, these these uh, countervalence. I mean, it's amazing. They, you can't smell the stuff, at least locally. All right, delivery modes. I mean, I've, I've had people, you know, use high pressure sprayers, just spray it on garbage cans. We've talked about those 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 uh, uh, fans that will blow or or mist. I think uh, you guys were using some of that stuff. I don't even know if you were there, but you guys had those misters. Yeah. Yeah. That's this waterless vapor type. It can be heated or, or, or not heated. So you just hook it up to the drum and it just blows this stuff into the air. And I think that's the, the thing we were talking about at one point, Rob. I think that's what I was thinking when we were talking about the blue pasta and the air scrubbing. Oh. No, this this was the you had a you had a drum and you had this this little little fan they put yeah, in it. Yeah, it's a little mister. Yeah, and then yeah. 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 And that's what you did before you had this big, huge system. Okay. That big, that big. Uh, I have to have them show me the air scrubbing. Yeah. All right, wastewater treatment plants. There's a whole host of areas where you may have issues. You know, trickling filters are really easy because the, the water is trickling across them. There's a, there's loss of, uh, or the odors are coming off of those. DAFs, you know, you're adding air. Anytime you're adding air, you're, you're mixing things. If there's H2S there or other odors, they're going to come off. So this is what I was just talking about, that uh, drum top unit. It all depends on how much space, you know, how much area there is that you have to counter, uh, cover. Those drum those drum top units are for smaller areas. And I know you guys have a big space there to take care of, and that's why you went to that big, that big huge air scrubber. All right, they have one way to eliminate H2S. Just one. The recycling. Bioxide. 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 Yes. Excellent. Is it, does anybody have another one? There's so many. I the pH. Okay. That keeps it in solution. Anybody else? Well, that's not H U S. That's water. Water. 
water temperature? Yeah. Like keeping it hotter or colder? Colder. All right. Thanks, Kirby. That was that was creative. <laughs> How about iron? Remember the I remember the, the plant that had a mile miles worth of uh, concrete pipe gone. Iron was the cure there. That's, and that's really a pretty good one. That forms that iron sulfide. So masking agents chemically change the odor molecule, but is something new, true or false? False. 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 Excellent. Name one way to treat male odors. Or did you just say it? There you go. <laughs> and, guys, you have completed your training here at Water Tech University.